Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Wednesday. I am just getting set up over here. I was having a little bit of an internet like issue, so if you guys can hear me and if you're out there, let me know. It's always typical. It's like right when I right when I start is like the first time of the day that I have internet issues. So if you guys don't mind, let me know if you're out there. Let me know if you can hear me. Hey, I can hear I can see you guys. What's going on, guys? Yo, what's shaking, guys? Happy Wednesday to you. Good, good, good. You can hear me, everybody? Cool. I was, um, as soon as I started, I, uh, was pressing, you know, go live or whatever, and it just kept on saying three, two, one, and spinning. And then I, like, click on my computer, and it's doing the same thing. I'm like, one, one show a week, you know? So, hey, you guys, I'm happy that you're here. Good to... You know, I say see you because I can see your names, you know what I mean? So good to see you guys. I hope uh, early summer is off to a good start. And uh, I, I know it's card show season, so I'm sure you guys are, all the weekend warriors are out there going out, working them or going to them. Yeah, man, I'm coming to Rhode Island. I can't wait. I, I'm excited. I love I love the history of the East Side uh, or the East Coast, too. I was just in Philly in Fishtown um, a couple of weeks back and it was cool, like, walking around the streets, going to a card show in, like, this cool old city and seeing people, like, dressed as patriots and things like that. It was fun. But, um, you guys, all the cards I got here tonight, a buddy of mine sent me and, um, sent me, uh, just a box of, let's see, do I have it right here? I got this, I got this great box in the mail and it was just, like, full of comic cards, uh, basketball cards, baseball cards. Star Wars cards, just a bunch of old stuff. And he was like, hey, use this for use this for demos. So that's what we're going to do. So I appreciate that. So I'll turn it around, guys. And tonight's cool. Like I got, um, I love early Marvel stuff. So you guys, I got early Marvel stuff. 1990 Spider-Man. So we'll do that. And I got some like surface stuff on it and like a little bit of edge and corner stuff. So we'll see if we can make any improvements. I've really never messed around with them before. We did that hologram a couple weeks ago, which was sweet. And that worked out really well. So we'll see if we can do any edge and corner work on a Marvel card. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, we'll figure it out. At least you'll know if you got any of these. And then um, I soaked a card not too long ago, Bowman Chrome. And we got dents out of the back. But after so much handling... I got the card real dirty, so we'll just like clean up a Bowman Chrome. Got a 1980 um, Darth Vader with, uh, so it's, what is it? I, gotta, I can't, I gotta cheat, I gotta look. The Empire Strikes Back. So I got Empire Strikes Back Vader with a bunch of wax and stuff on the front. It was like the last card in the pack, so we'll clean that up. And then I, I love Leaf stuff. Like I have a Leaf Limited. Um, uh, I got a Leaf Limited uh, from uh, 1994, so... Well, Dan, if you can't watch, you better get out of here. You better, you gotta, I'll, I'll record it just for you so you can watch it. I hope your team wins. All right. So I think it's probably, what, basketball or hockey on tonight? Since I'm a Detroiter and my teams are nowhere near these playoffs so that I, I just kind of live vicariously through you guys. Whenever I see like someone posting sports cards of like a, like Anthony Edwards, I'm like, Anthony Edwards must be playing pretty well like, lately or something like that. Or I see Luca a lot. So I, I think Luca's up there. But let's get to it, you guys. Let me turn this thing around. And hey, another thing, like tonight, you guys, like if I'm I'm Kurt from Kurt's Card Care. Thanks for watching. But like some of the stuff I don't even think up, you know, like I'll just, I'm, we're going to work on cards tonight. I know that. But I do this live show because I make a card polish. I make uh, card sprays. You can do a variety of cool stuff with these. And also just like using your brain and using like, like little detail Q-tips and stuff. You know, I'll teach you a bunch of cool card things. But the live show is cool because I make the stuff, but I'm like, I've always been obsessed with like, all right, I think my stuff is just hard to hand over and be like, all right, figure it out. You know what I mean? It's just kind of, once you figure it out, I want you to teach it to other people. But I do these shows Wednesday night to teach and share things that like I think about or what I'm looking for or, or whatever, you know, because I make the videos to show you guys the best I can, but I got to edit them, you know, and I got to like trim them down and I'm a talker, so it's like you don't want to watch like 20 minute videos every day of me, you know what I mean? So, like, Wednesday Night Lives, you got to deal with me, all right? But uh, I'll also, guys, like, so in here, I'm in my card studio. The cards are behind me, so we'll work on those in a second. Then, if you catch me looking over here, I'm always looking over at um, 
the monitor. I try to answer questions, but when I'm working on cards, it's hard for me to like read the questions. So if there's anything cool that's on your mind, um, feel free to throw it on the board or hit me with it at the end. I'll always do answer questions at the end. You can always DM me. You guys know that I'm a reachable person and I don't take my customers for granted, you know, so I always reply personally and whether I can tell you it's something doable or not doable, I'll tell you. So let me turn this camera around here. We'll look at some uh, cards and we'll, uh, we'll clean up. We'll see what the heck we can do with some of these, you know? So if you guys are, if any of you guys have never watched the show before, or never even thought about cleaning up your collection, um, you know, chances are that if you got cards from, you know, years back, they, they might have a little wear and tear. They might be a little dirty, you know? So, uh, tonight we'll keep it simple. Like here's what I was, you know, sometimes you guys all go off on things and I'll like work on crazy wrinkles and crazy creases and getting like, what do you call that? Like paper glued to a card off. Sometimes you guys might watch that and go, all right, I'll watch it, but I ain't touching nothing like that. So like, I don't want to be too far out there. So like, let's, I'll show you how to just prep some cards, easy, clean, and stuff that will take us just a few minutes. And you guys do that. I think you're probably you know, you're going to be, you're going to be just fine for a lot of stuff. But if you geek out on it and you find it to be really fun, you can always like go as far as you want. That's the great thing about card restoration is there's a ton of them, you know, there's a ton of them. And, uh, I think it's cool to keep them in great shape and pass them on to the next generation. You know what I mean? So let me turn this thing around and we'll get started. Oh, and you know, here's the thing. Here's something I get asked. Okay. So you guys, I get asked, um, about my setup. All right, so here's what my setup looks like. So, you know, just obviously our stream and whatever, but I use a digital microscope, and this thing's cool because I'm 42 years old and my eyes are getting, like, a little blurry, so this thing helps me out quite a bit. So that's what that is. Um, I don't know if we'll need it tonight, but I also got a couple lights, LEDs. I like this because it's a wand. So, like, um, for an example, you guys... And I won't go too far into this, but, um, like when you're looking for dings or dents, when you can rub, like when you can do a wand like that across it, you can find them a little bit better. All right. So that's part of my setup. Uh, I got lots of card mats. You guys, I use these for a variety of things. We'll probably use some tonight. Um, you got to have a monster or a Pepsi or something and then scooting down, you know, got your, all your tools, your locker, and but just humidors. All right. So that's what my my standard setup looks like, you know? And you guys, I got, I use the same thing you guys use because that's like, I made all this stuff for me years ago. And then when I started providing it, I'm like, well, let's make it the same way I keep it, you know? So, all right, let's get going. So tonight, let's start with, I want to do, I want to do the Spider-Man first, if that's cool with you guys, because I got a little method here. I wanted to get them all in and, um, and cheers to you guys. I'm thirsty. I was just talking a lot. So cheers. All right. So number one. Isn't that a great card? I don't know if you guys were collectors in the 90s, but this was some of the early stuff that I was able to like buy packs of. So it always holds a special, you know, just memories for me at least. But this card is in really great condition on the front, at least. There's a couple things I see that... Like, this is why the light is so helpful, because if you're, like, looking at cards in daylight, fellas and ladies, you see how it looks, like, perfect in daylight. That's, like, how dudes take pictures for their eBay cards, right? But if you want, really want to get in on it, like, I can see that there is, and I'm sure you guys can too, but what I'm talking about is there's some, and I touched it with my finger and it wouldn't come off earlier, so I'm like, oop, save it, save it for the, for the live. And then... You know, another one, like right there, right? So, you know, I know a lot of guys will say, hey, Kurt, I've never even graded a card before. You know, like, it looks fun. I'm excited to do it, but I'm kind of intimidated. Just have fun with it, you guys. Replace intimidation with excitement. Have fun. Just like, but look at your stuff real good, you know? And then at least you can identify the issues and then say, all right, well, I'm going to give it a my best effort. So that, and then this one on the back was what I was excited to kind of give a shot. Wait. I'm adjusting my light. One second. So I don't know if I can do anything with this here on the top, you guys. But see that? 
So that's what I thought was interesting about the Spider-Man card. So let's try to make some improvements. So what I hope we can do is get the stuff off of the card. Um, it's clear, whatever it is, and it's not scratched. This is probably some sort of residue or something. So what I'll typically do is just keep it simple and I'll give you the best view I can. So what I wanna do is get some cotton. And since I got this cool like card mat now, I usually just used to put my card spray on the table, but I can't spray it on this cause it's just like a mat obviously. So it's almost like I enjoy painting you guys. So I guess I'm just used to using like a palette like this. So I just spray the card spray on here when I use it, little pieces of it. And uh, so it's just kind of like your, your paints. But what I'm gonna do is use just a little bit of cotton. Well, rather I'm gonna use a cotton and just use a little bit of card spray is what I'm trying to say. I touched my hand because I just like to just use a little bit. So I don't wanna like soak the card out. So I'll do that and then I'll keep like just a, a microfiber handy. The top one, I'll show you guys in a second, the top one appeared to wipe away, the bottom one is still on there a little bit. And just even another thing guys, like I should do best practices. So like if you're going to want to hold the card, just put like a penny sleeve over it just so you're not getting too like hands on with it. That way you're just, and you know what I did before the live? I cut my fingernails. You never want to have long nails touching cards because it's the easiest thing to do guys. Like you'd be like working over here, but then you get heavy handed with your left hand and shove you the side of your thumbnail, like into a card. Sounds crazy, but <laughs> take it from a guy that sat and worked on lots of cards. Like I'll tell you all the little things that are easy to miss. So, so you see what I'm saying? Like that wasn't hard to remove that, but it was hard to see it. So that's why a good wand light like that is good. I don't see anything else stuck to the front. So pretty cool, right? Just little things, but like when you held it like that, you couldn't see it. But as soon as you got under there, you could see it for sure. You know? So, um, so then uh, let's take a look here. And here's what I wanted to try was the back. So let me walk, talk us through it. So right here, we have a dent. So I'm gonna, you guys, I'll call things valleys or ridges. That's a valley, it's dipping down. And then that one right there is kind of like a ridge. So you know, some, when guys will send me a question saying, hey, Kurt, should I put like the uh, clamps? Should I put, or should I put the card between the plates? Well, if you got a valley, you need to get that to come up. So like putting, you don't want to, like, smashing stuff doesn't work. You know, you got to be really delicate with this type of stuff. So like what I'm pick, what I'm thinking is, and I always try to keep it simple, but like, just like humidity or massaging that, that ain't going to work. So I'm going to have to go to moisture. And I'm thinking of just touching that area just a little bit with a little bit of moisture and just kind of like watching it and seeing if it like lifts up. And if it does, I don't know, we'll, we'll just, let's just pass, let's just try that part first. So what I want to do is And these are cool, you guys. Like, you you know the little tool that I'll use, like the paper pencil too, like the Tortian? It's like the same deal. I just switched over to these mainly because I can show you better with my demonstrations. Like, I love the Tortian, but like, I'm almost like working on a card like this. And I'm like, see how cool that is? And you're like, what the hell is he doing? You know what I mean? So that's why I just got a little bit better with these. But these are awesome too. All right. So let me kind of get a good view for you here. And stick around with me, guys. I got a, you know, we got a few of them tonight. So, and this right here, like, this card has a couple other issues, too. Like, if you guys notice while we're kind of, has kind of a corner issue. Has, like, an issue right there, too. 
So I could spend all night on this one, but I just, for tonight's purposes, I just wanted to kind of dial it on this. And if I can fix this, I'm pretty sure I can fix the rest of them. Now this type of card, a 1990 Marvel card, has a very similar coating to like, it has a very similar feel to like Upper Deck from that day. Um, so if this works well for this, this would be like the same type of stuff that I would practice with like maybe the, some of the other like kind of like 89, 90 stuff where if you, this, if, if you guys are new to my channel, I can fill you in later. But like if for all my OGs on here, like, you know, like you can't soak one of these, like fully soak a card like this to get any wrinkles out because it just doesn't work right. It's just, they're, they're kind of like a hybrid of thin paper and kind of like a, a varnishy plastic where it just doesn't like work great. So I, um, I feel like moisture is the only option to kind of like relax some of these things. But it's just the key is just the right amount. Remember, if you put too much in, you're going to wrinkle it and it's going to probably be permanent. So just patient. Just go slowly with this type of stuff because you can always come back and do another little application. But you can't, if you wrinkle it all out, you're just going to be done. You know what I mean? It's just like game over at that point. So here's what I'm doing. Oh, let me let me show you guys what I'm seeing. So put some moisture in there. See how it's puffy? I want it to be puffy. Because I want it to be a little bit puffy right there, not further. Because if I if I got this thing, if I put too much moisture in there, and like let's just say that it was all puffy, like a big old like nickel size or something like that, I screwed up. That's too much. But if I can put a little bit of moisture in there, I'm thinking like that it will lift up that bump or that, that, that valley. Can you, can you see how the valley's hanging in there for us, you guys, and the areas around it are lifted up? It's tempting to put more on there, but I don't want to because I can see that valley's hanging in there, but I think that if we just let that sit in there, it's eventually going to go. It's eventually going to lift up. And if it does, it's all going to settle smoothly. I don't mind if it dries a little bit like this because it will still be up versus down, and then I'd be able to, like, maybe just use the card tool on it a little bit or, you know, little things you can do, like put a penny sleeve over it. Like I'll even show you right now. This is no harm right now, even though it's just a little bit moist in there. Let's just see if this like, I'm just barely touching the top of it, guys. Just I'm not pushing. I'm just, as soon as I feel that I made contact with the plastic, I'm just kind of dancing back and forth on it. Zero pressure at all. Just kind of like, Hopefully, in my mind, what I'm trying to do is just evenly disperse that little bit of moisture we put in there to hopefully get in that valley. And then a lot of card care, guys, when it gets into this type of stuff, is you kind of, like, do little things like that and sit around and wait. <laughs> you know, so that's why we got four cards tonight. So I'm going to put this one to the side here in a second, but I just want to, I really want to make an improvement on it. So let's just set it up the best we can, and then we will we'll jump on a few other cards, and we can always come back to it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to try to transfer. So I said this to one of my buddies today and we laughed. I said, uh, so when, when you have like a little injury like this, like a little indent, I'm trying to explain to him, I go, hey, you don't want to soak the card. You don't want to go too far with it. I go, picture like when a, a, like when a snail on a cartoon goes by and a snail leaves a trail. See, like, my snail trail right there? I go, that's kind of like the trail you want to leave over something like that. Like, just a little snail trail. So, I hope that makes sense, because if I'm trying to write that to you guys, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But if you see it, I think you know what I'm saying. So, just let me finish kind of just, I guess I'll call it hopefully round one, and hopefully this works for us. But I'm just going to kind of touch this edge with a little moisture I want, and we're just going to put it to the side. So that's all, that's as, that's as much as I want to put in there right now. I don't even know if it really got, let's see. Let's, it didn't do a whole lot yet, but I'm going to sit and wait. That's one of those things that you don't rush because you can't, can't get it too wet. I'll screw it up. So let's press pause on that. What we did do though successfully was got the crap off the front. Super cool picture. 
and we'll check this back. Well, after we do the other cards, we'll come back and look at this one. So I don't want to put it between any pads or anything like that. I just want to let I just want the natural tension of the air to dry it a little bit while and just see what the heck happens to it. So we'll check back. All right, guys. So if you're working on something like that and you're like, hey, what the heck do I do now? I just I just I, do I keep on going? Do I keep on put? Don't keep on finding ways to use your hands. Just know when to hold them and know when to fold them. So we're going to hold this one. So we're going to hold it. Let's scoot it over. Next, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll jump into for the, for the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ulysses, right? The snail trail. It makes sense, doesn't it? Um, yeah, right. Robert, good, my, my, my good buddy, Robert. I, good to see you, Robert. I'm happy you're on here. And, and Robert, I'll listen to anything you tell me about cars. You guys, uh, follow Robert. Uh, I, he's, I got him to finally, uh, come on, uh, Instagram because he wasn't doing Instagram very much, but Robert's a great card guy. Um, yeah, you know what? Frank, Frank asked me, do I have a, a method to get a, 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 a chrome card that's slightly bowed? Yeah, for sure. Um, let's talk about that. Um, when it comes to the, like, so Frank, let me show you this one. Like, you know, a lot of the uh, Bowman Chromes, if it just has like a, a little light curvature to it, Frank, it's not really that big of a deal. Like, you know, I think all Chrome cards have a little bit of a curve to them. And I soaked this card, you guys. So like this one is pretty darn flat for, uh, you know, going through that whole process, you know, and like, I'm going to show you guys something. So let me get my screen up. So what I would do Frank, if you got a Bowman Chrome card with a little bit of a curve to it, I would um, put it in humidor. So this is Frank. I'm coming over here for you, buddy. Put it in the humidor. I got my humidor at 73%. So I'd put the Bowman Chrome card in there for probably an hour and a half, two hours, just to get some humidity in the card. And then I'd put it between, I'd put it between two pads like this, and I'd put it between two plates like this, and I would. Um, put my little clips on the side and just let it rest for like 24 hours. And that should usually get it back nice and flat. All right. Uh, Josh, welcome back to the show, man. We got a bunch of stuff going on tonight. Got comic cards. We got nineties baseball. We got Darth Vader and we got Riley green right here, but let me show you guys the story on this Riley green. All right. So, um, it was, I'm just getting my pictures on my monitor here over here. I want to show you something because I still get pictures sent to me daily, you know, about weird dents on um, a lot of problems with uh, Bowman Chrome Baseball. So, like, check this out, you guys. Can you see that? So, this dent right here was on the back of this card. And if you guys haven't watched it, I have this posted on uh, Instagram and on YouTube. It had these, it has big dents on the back of the card. So I showed the whole video, whoops, my phone came unstuck. All right, so I showed the whole video of how to soak a card and get the dents out of the back. And that's this was that card. So check that out. Isn't that pretty awesome? So if you're like, how the hell do you do that? It's um, soaking a card in my card spray will, on, on this type of card with a plastic front and a soft back will a lot of times lift out big dents. So that's what I did on it. But since this card got handled like crazy and I was just I wasn't the, the 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 sweetest to it because I was more focused on the back um it's dirty so I think you guys can see that like there's just a bunch of crap on the card I probably got some scratches on the card too but it's just like typical Bowman stuff well it's a little bit more than that because I was I was very hands-on with this card like there's stuff on Riley's helmet and face but so anyways same same rules uh kind of apply for this you guys what i'm going to do is i usually start with card spray when it's something um like kind of weird residues and stuff like that you know so let me show you this so for all my i, I think that if you collect bowman baseball cards you have to be good at card care i swear that these cards are um probably the most sent to me, I guess, when for people that collect modern era stuff, I, I get the most pictures probably of Bowman cards. And um, 
a lot of them have heavy scratches in them that come right from the damn factory that way. So I can't help you too much with that, guys. But when it comes to some of these dents now on the back, um, some of these minor print lines or these weird kind of abrasions up it, a lot of it will clean off. My buddy Chris, I don't know if Chris is on here, but Chris, Chris is telling me about some oil that they use. Um, what was it? Uh, I can't, it, Chris is a smart guy, but he was telling me about this. Uh, he, he was telling me about how print lines work. He's like, you know, some print lines are, um, I still got gunk on Riley's face, so I'm just going to do that. Uh, he's like, you know, a lot of, he's like, you know, the reason that some of these will wipe off so easy with, he's like, you can't get them off with a microfiber, but card spray or card polish will get it off is like some sort of streaky grease that comes on all the Bowman cards, but so, so far so good, but I still got, you know, there's still some like, actually that turned out pretty damn good. Well, let's polish it. That makes these look even better. That'll be sweet. This card was beat up. It was real bad. And, uh, I just thought the front was crap. So <laughs> it's kind of fun when you surprise, when you get a little surprise. I didn't even know if it would make a good, I didn't even know if it would make a good piece, but I thought showing you guys the back was cool. All right, well, let's clean the front. So once you get all the, like the oils and the crap off the front, you guys, like, let's pretend it's a super valuable card. Super valuable Bowman. You don't, like I said, you don't want to touch it. Every time you guys open up your card polish, I want you to do a nice big circle. And I want you to cut across it, flip the applicator, keep it happy. Use it one layer at a time, all right? And what we're going to do, yo, Matthew, what's up, buddy? I miss you, man. Good to see you. It's Matt, it's one of our Detroit Tigers. All right, so just you guys, when it comes to do, doing a card polish like this, I just like to do like half the card at a time and it's not something you need to rush through. Again, everything that I think one of the biggest things that you might hear me repeat. All right. Cheers. Time for a monster social every time. Uh, oh yeah, shell. That is your, that is your uh, tiger, isn't it? I got to get you a, I got to get you a Riley green Jersey and it would say green on the back, like Irish. That's cool. All right. Cheers. One sec. So everything that I was going to say, guys, is all the stuff that you see me do here, don't use any pressure. Don't, it's not about like elbow grease when it comes to card care and at least using my stuff. Some stuff requires elbow grease, like sometimes removing stubborn ink. But outside of that, it's pretty much either the card's going to clean up or the blemish will go away or it's not, you know, it's just kind of, you can usually get to an absolute like it's going to stay there and the card's going to be as best condition as possible or, uh, you know, you might get lucky and, and save it. But if you are a Chrome collector, guys, card polish is good. It'll get all the, uh, it'll bring the nice shine out of it. And a lot of the plastics they use on these cards, I, I think that they've used better plastics in more recent years. But some of the stuff they used to make these cards out of with was, I just swear, the cheapest stuff they could get their hands on. And the, as the years go by, man, the... Uh, they get they they kind of like age like old silverware. They just kind of get dull. And this one card looks really good. You guys, can you see it already? Can you see all the kind of colors coming out of it? That's it's a good one. I'll pick it up here in a second. I'll give you a final look. But there's just some crap I couldn't get off of his uh, face area. So I'm just doing my best. Yeah, so I got my two buddy Matt's on here. Matt Kelly, you better uh, call me if you come on out. And no one, and I'm I'm sure whatever you bought is mind blowing. So I gotta see it, of course. But yeah, you better call me, Matt, if you're coming out. You know I'm here all day. Me and the girls are working all day every day. Thanks to all these collectors that keep us busy. You guys, the best freaking people in the world to work for. So thank you for that. Oh, that's good. That's what I love about polished modern cards. Isn't that fun? Just like it turns into a, it has that rainbow look to it. That's great. Cool. All right, guys. So that's, so if you have a, if you have a Bowman, now I'll tell you, getting those dents out of the back, 
it's a, it's a process. I had to put this card in the card solution for 20 minutes, which is no big deal. But then it took me four four days of like trading out between the pads, letting it sit like this and just rest. And then I'd you know come in and it would be like curve, it'd be like cur- it'd be like curving, you know. And I'm like, oh, I got to get it flat again, so I put it back between the pads. So it's definitely worth it if you got a nice card. But I also want to tell you guys this: if you've never soaked a Bowman or anything like that, do it. Don't wait till you got a good card. Do it on a cheap card and get comfortable with it because I don't want you guys to just know enough to be dangerous, you know, and go out and like make a mistake. So just practice on your cheap stuff. It's it's fun. You'll uh you'll get good at it quickly. So there we go. That looks good, doesn't it? I like that. All right, Michelle, I'm giving this one to you. This goes to my girl Michelle cuz she likes Riley Green, so I got to put it in a sleeve for Shell. And I'll see you soon, and I will give this to Michelle. All right, let's do yo, Card Pola. I appreciate the testimonial, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, it would be. Hey, actually, Mr. Hawk Hoagies, you just asked a really good question. He just said, hey, would the polish wouldn't be ideal for a 79 tops? Ooh, I think it would be. So let's ju- let's do an 80. Tops, did tops make these, you guys? Come on, you guys are smarter than me. Who made these... Uh, Cards, I assume tops, right? There we go, tops. So yes, let's do a 1980. I think this is an 80, right? So you were talking about a 79. Let's do, check this out. So 1980 tops, right? This would be the same surface as an 80 tops football card, hockey card, basket. But basketball cards were different because they were like the, the, the triple cut ones, but that's a different time. But check this out. Oh, good, man. Hey, everybody that just got their stuff in the mail, have fun with it, you guys. Get it. Listen, um, you're doing your homework by hanging out with me tonight. So thanks for uh, for being here. And cleaning up your cards is freaking awesome. You guys will have a good time doing it. It's like, especially when you find stuff like this. So like, look at this. How many times do you guys of us vintage people find a cool card like this? And you're like, oh, damn, it has all that old, you know, wax from the wax pack on it. And then, you know, you you might not even know what to do with it. But then other times, you know, like in, if you're like me in the past, I would get um, like nylons, like pantyhose, nylons, and start doing all the, because it's like a cheesecloth and, it, and it's good. You know what I mean? But what the problem was, what I was facing was I would um, then hold hold these under my light and I could sometimes see swirl marks that I left. And I'm freaking OCD about being having a light touch. But it was just too much pressure. With The older these get, like this is a 44-year-old wax stuck on there. It gets harder and harder. So let me show you guys how to get rid of this. Well, I talk a good game. Let's just make sure it works. But let's. Uh, we're just going to use card polish on this. This is not something... Card polish will remove wax. Okay? Don't use spray. It would just make it wet and probably... It might remove it, but let's just stick to the card polish, all right? Very similar to bubble gum. If you have bubble gum on the front, but check it out. I have, um, and I'm, um, I'm going to tell you something when it comes to bubble gum. I have some kick-ass videos, dude. If you guys watched them, I was, and I'm not, I promise you guys, I just geek out on this. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I was so impressed that it worked. I have, uh, let me show you. I still got more. I, ha- I, okay, I haven't even opened them all yet, but I got a box of 89 hockey where I'm, you know, maybe I should open up some more. They're fun. But you open these up, man, and this gum leaves huge stains on the cards. I was able to soak some hockey cards in my card spray. So like in this stuff and like just a little tray, you soak it. And I was able to get all the damn gum stains out of it. If you haven't watched it, it's on, I have a YouTube playlist called Paper and Vintage, and you'll see it. It's wild. So yes, you can get a lot of that crap out. All right, let's get this off, and then we'll keep on rolling, guys. So same deal. Just go around the, go around your 10. I'm going to do just one side at a time here. So I want to make sure I cover, I get a, all of the wax that I want to remove off. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. 
uh, Hulk when you said, "Would I could I polish a seventy nine tops?" And like, lo and behold, look what we have next. So yeah, here's the deal. Here's the, the and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys something. This is why I love the live shows. Like, I can think of so many random things to say, and I guess that's just how I process stuff. So thanks for for listening. But let me show you something cool. Cause check it out. Remember that? Remember it looked like that. Now look at it. It's gone. So here's what you guys can do. Any card that has a, a a lacquer or like a polyurethane or a varnish. So that's and you and you might say to yourself, well, how do I know, Kurt? What the hell is that? Anytime there's a shine, okay, and then flip it over. So let's do it together. There's no shine, right? It's raw. It's a and it has a feel to it, right, guys? It has just like a it's a straight up paper. The back of this card is sick, though, isn't it? Like. The colors are fantastic. But uh, so, but that, see, now we go, there we go. Now we have a shine. Now we don't. Putting card spray or card, pol- or p- card polish on here would make no sense. It's not, the card polish is good for plastic surfaces and surfaces that are treated with a, a polyurethane. All right. So let's get the rest of this clean. And like I said, guys, I, you you can use um, pantyhose like I've done like that that material on these in the past, but I found that when I was doing a Jordan sticker rookie one time that uh, and this was years back, but I was using the pantyhose on the if you guys are familiar with eighty six Fleer, there's a lot of um, you know they're wax packs so it's stuck to them, and I was getting uh, doing this process with that, and then after I was looking at her light, man. I had some swirl marks in it. I was pissed. And um I took my time, <laughs> you know. I would it would take a hell of a lot longer than this, I'll tell you that. I would just do little pieces at a time. And then uh, you know, when I got to the end of the road, I was I was frustrated. So ever since then I just use card polish for it. There we go. Cool, right? That's a good looking card. No more stuck on wax. So Darth Vader is looking good. So let me put that to the side here. Jeez, you guys are moving along. I hope, uh, oh, let me show you something too, you guys. This is important. I just noticed this. Let me get some good light. When, you guys see how I got a couple, uh, a couple wet spots right there now? Polish left a little bit of moisture on the card. Don't let that worry you one bit. Just let it sit. It'll evaporate. It evaporates 100%. So I just noticed that. So I usually get probably one comment a day. Somebody will clean a card and they'll be like, oh, shoot, Kurt. I got like a, a wet mark right there. Did I screw up? And then I can, I always like try to like play it up like, oh my God, what did you do? I'm like, no, you shouldn't have done that. But then I, I don't have a heart to keep playing like that. So then I'll be like, no, man, it's cool. Just let it try, <laughs> you know? So there you go. All right. And so let me jump up. I want to look up here um, because I see a good question. Do you wash your microfiber cloth after polish every day if you were the next day? So, okay, I'm getting asked, do I clean this towel? Now, these big towels, I can use this big towel for probably, I I, I would say probably until here. I use this until it's has a hard, so it doesn't feel soft like this anymore. You'll you'll start to feel like a little bit of like the polish buildup on it. Then I get rid of it. I don't, um, I don't wash them. I repurpose these. So if you guys are guys that, you know, if you have a garage, I turn these into garage towels. I don't wash them. I get rid of them, um, and repurpose them because that's the biggest concern I have is scratching a card because, if I've used um, before, you guys, a microfiber too long, I've used one of these too long. I've also used one of these too long. And there's a time where I scratched a card because I just should have threw it away. All right. So good question. And then even like I purposely use these um, cottons, you guys, on, on cards. So I throw them away when I'm done with them. So I just I'm not tempted to hold on to them. You know what I mean? So good question. I appreciate that. Okay, good. Yeah, get rid of them. That's it's the only thing you guys that could happen. Uh, the only thing that could like because this, you guys, my card polish. I won't go into a long uh, story, but I don't put any sort of uh, sanding agents or abrasives in here. There's nothing that will sand down a card. This is just 
purely good for cleaning cards and, you know, working on plastics and, you know, varnishes like I showed you. So it's not like um, a Meguiar's or a Scratch X. So you won't scratch a card with that. You won't scratch a card with card spray, but you could if you had a dirty applicator. Yeah, you could. So be very cautious. I love that comment. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Hulk Hoagies, if you're, hit me up tomorrow, man. I'm, it's not something that I'm probably going to, you know, do a whole lot with. So I, I just like showing it off. So I'm, 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 I'm down for it. Maybe we can trade. Maybe you can trade me something cool. Um, so let's take a look. All right. Next. Um, uh, you're the man, man. I appreciate you. So now look at this one. I want to see. These were cool, you guys. This was like early for me. These were some of the nicest baseball cards when I was young. Um, I was like 12, 13. And as like I shared with you, they still stay pretty. But look at when you when you look at it like that, it's pretty. But when you hold it up in the light, you guys, you can see there's a lot of just patina around. The, like, look at that. They get dirty. They get dirty. This one's what? 30 years old, you know, so, and it's been handled pretty good, but overall, like the corners and edges and stuff are pretty good. It looks, you know what a lot of this stuff guys can be? It's from, um, I put it into a new penny sleeve, but, um, they used to make really bad penny sleeves that would leave weird films on cards. Like you see like Frank's face, like it's not scratches. It's like some weird, it's like a, it's like cheap plastic. Yeah, and we probably got some scratches on the front. But I love cleaning up gold cards. And I don't know if you guys are old enough or, you know, if you're my age or older or just a baseball lover. Frank Thomas was awesome. Like, he was a great, great baseball player to watch. And he was he was awesome. He was just a big dude, just a brute. Just looked like a badass every time that you seen him play baseball. Just one of those. And then, like, I used to go to baseball games a lot. So it was one of those guys where when you seen him in person, he was the stories matched up. He was as big he was he was even bigger in person. If you guys ever watched LeBron James play basketball, if you ever had a chance to see LeBron James in person, he just looks different out there compared to a lot of the other guys. Now, I used to go to basketball games a lot in the early two thousands, so I know like I know that uh there's LeBron probably looks small now compared to some of the guys out there, but uh but you know what I'm saying. Frank was one of those guys. So I definitely, you guys have to like use card spray on this one first because it's just got a lot of like, it's got a lot of crap on it. So let's see the best we can do. And then we'll come back and look at my spider, man. Um, yeah, exactly. The big hurt. That that was, a, that's a kick-ass nickname, dude. If your nickname is the big hurt, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a, that's a good one. That's respect. But I have to admit, I did see like Frank Sinatra, or Frank Sinatra, I don't know what I'm, Frank Sinatra, Frank Thomas is what I should rather say. I did see Frank Thomas on like some, I think it was like some like Viagra commercials or something though. And I was kind of like, no man, Frank Thomas don't have no problems. Frank Thomas is the man. <laughs> yeah. But uh, hey, I guess, I guess sometimes after baseball, you gotta go you know, find some new new gigs, I guess. But anyways. Guy was cool, and Leaf Limited cards were cool. So I'm just going to take my time with this one, you guys, because I actually really like this card. I thought it would be a cool display piece. Yeah, buddy. Look at that. Hold on. Let's do a side-by-side. -side. So look at the bottom. And look at the word socks. Right to the top. It's looking sharp. I know we got a long ways to go, but it's dirty as hell. So here's another tip. I don't like to like paint myself into a corner. So like move your card, just flip it over. And then I'm going to go back up here. Yeah, was that, was that what it was? That what it was? New Jetix? I, I thought it was like something like that. Yeah, Doug Flutie, testosterone. Like Doug Flutie was like pure testosterone. Come on, guys. You know? But no, I, I, I respect anybody out working, you know what I mean? But let's see. I'm uh, I'm excited, you guys. I'm in, uh, you know, I've shared before, but I live in Metro Detroit. 
and um, there's a card show coming up. We usually don't get a bunch of good card shows, but um, there's one coming up, and I think it's just called the Detroit Card Show, and it's next weekend. And Barry Sanders is going to be there signing autographs, and so is Joe Montana, which I find so exciting. I've never stood in an autograph line. I think I'm too, like, you know, short attention span to do it, but I'm I'm weighing it out. I'm like, you know, do I feel just kind of like those guys, do you talk to those guys, or is it just like you just wait in line, and they just push you through, and they uh, sign you and push you out? Like, I don't know. I'm socially awkward sometimes, so I'm like, I don't even know how this all works. So I'm excited that they're coming, but I didn't really think too much further than that. Um, oh, that's, you guys are so funny. Hey, I, uh, <laughs> uh, PNW, I've asked him a hundred times. <laughs> you guys, I couldn't keep up, man. I couldn't keep up. I, I do a lot of projects and I do, I seriously, you guys, I get between Instagram, Facebook, YouTube and emails. I probably get like 150 to 200 messages a day. And then I do my own projects. I would never be able to keep up on card care, but I'll tell you, I'll I'll always tell you what to do and I'll give you my best advice. I promise you that. So before we do the card polish, I want to do the back too. I, um, like I said, I, I will, and I, and I mean this, you guys, like I, um, I'll always reply to my messages I'll tell you if I think it's something you should do or not do. I'll tell you if the pictures suck and I need better ones to give you advice. I will tell you how to practice it. I'll tell you. Um, Or I'll just straight up, how many times have I told you guys? Don't touch it. There ain't nothing to do, you know? But, like, I'll give you all that. I I would never just, because I knew when I started you know, it was, I was nervous to like even offer my product to strangers back in the day. Like before I started selling it, I'm like, people are are not going to know what to do. They won't understand. So that's why I was like, you know, I'm going to be very customer service oriented because something like this requires that type of help, you know, and I, I've always been into working on cards. And when I started working on them years ago, I never had like a mentor or anybody to like bounce ideas off of. And I was like, I just wish I had somebody to like call or like show a picture to. And this is like, even like back when, like in my early twenties before like the internet of today. And sure enough, that's what happens now. But I'm that guy that people reach out to. So it's kind of funny how that's what I wanted, but that's what I kind of turned into, I guess, but I'll help you in those ways. Check this out. Look at, you can see Frank Thomas's face now. And there's no, eh, is that a scratch next to him? Let's just wait. We'll see if the card polish can get it. I, I that 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 part stuck me. You see that? There's like a line going up there. We'll see if we can get it. All right, let's try. So it's changing gears, you guys. So the the card spray used like on cards like this is awesome at getting like oils and crap and whatever. Like the front of this card still has a long ways to go. Yeah, can you still see? There's like stuff in it. Like there's still stuff, right? But I got most of the oily stuff off. So let's let's use the card polish. And hopefully that's going to get it real, real clean and bring that shine back. And then we'd have a successful Wednesday night, you know. And I hope that I was able to share some stuff with you that have, has might maybe was like on your mind. Or if you run into these types of challenges or whatever, you know. I don't really know about this serial number down here, guys. So I'm just not going to touch it. I mean, I don't think it's going to wipe away, but I like this card, so I don't really want to find out. So I'll just, I mean, if I'm wiping a little bit of card polish over it, that's no big deal. But I just don't want to wipe on the actual numbers. And thanks again, you guys, everybody, for being here tonight and hanging out and watching this. And even if you're watching this in the future, you know, when I have this on YouTube or whatever, just thanks for checking it out. And you guys, um, something I'm always open to, um, well, I'm open to every bit of advice or tips you guys have. So, you know, you guys have anything awesome that you're doing, fill me in. But also, um, if you guys have any suggestions, like if there's any, um, if there's any content that you guys would like to see, let me know. What I'm what I'm feeling is I want to get some thick some thick cards. 
like patch cards and stuff like that. I want to do some edge work and some corner work on some thick cards. So that's coming. But like I said, if there's anything that you guys need some assistance with or some help with or some ideas for content, let me know. Oh, check this out. It's the little things. But look at that. Got that thing off the side of Frank's face. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let me flip it over, guys. We'll do the front. New York Mark asked me a question. What's your take on PSAs, or what's your take on PSA take about polishing a card? R really, uh, here, here's all you guys got to know about PSA is you guys can clean your cards and send them into them. It's no big deal. I mean, they PSA doesn't need to endorse me. They, I'm a small fish, you know what I mean? So they just want to probably stick to their... Uh, their 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 guidebook of they they just don't want people like tampering with stuff but it's like you know cleaning off a card like i'm showing you guys tonight the fact that they wouldn't be open to that is weird to me like i could i even reached out to you know the there's a guy i saw in a video um talk, i think it was a guy that was talking about when he was asked about card cleaning he was on jeff uh jeff wilson's uh show uh right jeff wilson he has i saw that and um uh, the guy, they asked the guy about card care and he was like, you know, shut it down immediately. What's that guy's name? Uh, Ryan Hodge, I think his name was, I even sent him a message saying, Hey man, you know, I, I, there's so much I could share with you about paper and plastic restoration that is, you know, it's not, it's something I've spent years devoted to and I could teach you a lot. I could answer questions for you. I could show you why so many collectors love card care because I, I think you should give it a, you know, give it a shot. Guy didn't even write me back. And I, you know, so it's like, here's my thoughts on grading companies. You know, they're good at grading cards most of the time. So like, send them your cards. They're your cards. Feel free to like, you know, go over them, make sure they look good. Because look at, if we would have like sent this card in before cleaning it, I think it looked a lot worse than that. Check that out. So it's really nothing has changed with grading companies. They're not going to come out and endorse card care. And you know what? I think it's like crazy because restoration is part of every, um, it's basically a, a, an arm of every single hobby or collectible. You know, as much as like whether I collect guitars, I collect, I love uh, automotive, I love uh, cars, trucks, you know, restoration is a huge part. It keeps people involved in these hobbies. You know, I don't know too many guys that collect motorcycles that don't know how to work on them, you know? So, like, I was always passionate about cards, I guess, of all things in the world, sports cards and Pokemon cards now and all TCG stuff. But I always thought, you know, there should be, like, a really – there should be a – because I there never was, like, a formal way to prep cards or whatever. It was just kind of like – some people say don't do it and other people are like, I don't know how to do it. So that's when I was like, you know, there's, there's so many ways you can take care of paper or plastic, right? You know what I mean? Why wouldn't we like embrace that? You know, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying one day at a time, you guys. So I, I think that, you know, they don't need me. I don't need them, but you know what? I speak on behalf of a ton of collectors that say tons of people love working on cards and prepping cards. It's 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 here. It's part of the hobby. So if a grading company doesn't want to acknowledge that, you know, you can always plug your ears and close your eyes. You know what I mean? That's fine. You know what I mean? So whatever. You know, I have more. I, I talk to more collectors than probably any of these PSA companies, man. They'll take all. They'll, they'll take you send in an order. They'll take your money. But I bet you I talk to more guys and girls that collect than than most vendors, you know. So that's sweet, isn't it? That worked out great. That's a good looking card. So let's do a recap, you guys. So we got the the big hurt. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you guys, you guys, I mean, it's cool. And the thing is, I don't even care if people say to me like, "Hey, I'm not into card prep. I don't want to do it" or anything like that. It's fine. You know what I mean? You don't you don't have to. You know what I mean? But um, you know, for all of us that enjoy like working on cards and stuff like that, like you know, like we're something we like to do. Somebody said we got a bum corner on here. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's a good one to save. Check it out. Actually, it's kind of annoying, so let's take a look at it right now. <laughs> See, when you point something out to me like that, you know I can't just overlook it. 
So what I'll do right there, you guys, and we'll look at the uh, other cards, and then we'll wrap it up. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight, guys. We're, at the, we're, we're coming towards the end, and we'll do a quick recap. This card cleaned up phenomenally well. This thing was trashed. And I'm glad that I took, I, I was thinking to myself, did I take before and after pictures of this? I did, you guys. So uh, I'll do a recap tomorrow. And this little tool you guys I'm using is, I simply call it the card tool because I use it for edges, corners, sometimes little things on the surface, whatever. But, um, Got it closed. I'll never... You see that little triangle, fellas and ladies? I'll never get that triangle to go away. I, I refer to that as the triangle of death. <laughs> it's just... It's in foil and something hit it. And it's just like, we'll always... Even though I got the thing flat again. And it's like physically not opened up or... that It's not, it's not split anymore. That little bend will always be in there. Let's take a look again. Yep, it's it, that that little sucker will always stay in there. So that's a good thing. If you guys ever show me those little little lines when you get a corner like that, a little line, those things suck. Yeah, you can tighten them back up, but they definitely when you get a bend in a foil like that, probably isn't going to go anywhere. But always give it a shot. You know what I'm saying? And oh, somebody has asked me, how hard are you pressing on that? Um, I'm just using this, um, just using it, a l just using it real lightly, you guys, real lightly. Um, I don't, um, I don't push uh, hard on it. You know, so let's, uh, let's move on here, you guys, and I'm going to scoot this out of the way and we'll do a quick recap. So like the big hurt looks great. That was awesome. Pretty cool. I like that one. This reminds me of being young and like always wanting to pull that card out of a pack. And let's see our Vader. No more, no more ugly, uh, you know, the wax stains on there. So Vader looks good. The Riley Green. I put it back in the case, but that one looks good too. And then let me, let's wrap it up, you guys. I put that little bit of, uh, I put a little bit of moisture on that Spider-Man edge. Let's see if we did anything. You know, um, I don't need, like I said, I don't even know if we can get that out. Well, here's something I can tell you. Remember how it was all puffy when we started? And you see how I said, don't touch it. It's like, let, we'll just let it settle. See how it just went away. Now the indent is still there. So here's something I want to do. We'll, we'll, we're going to have to wait. We're going to all have to wait till tomorrow to see if it goes away. Because here's the issues I have on this card. I have a little bit of a... I don't know if you guys can see it. It's like by my thumb. Just kind of a hit in this edge. Kind of a soft corner up here. Right there. And then I got that. What I want to do is... We're going to put a little light spray of card spray on here. And I'm going to hold it all night long. And just see if a little light moisture in these areas can kind of just reset these. And before I even do that, I'm going to put, I, I, I know it's like a, it's like my wife says this word, we're going to spot treat it before we put it in the washing machine. You know, when you have three kids that play sports, spot treat that, spot treat that. So here, that's, that's the only word I can think of. So like, I'm going to spot treat these areas and just put literally, by literally putting a spot of spray on it. See it? See, that's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to. And if I get a little moisture inside this edge here, oh well, it's all going to dry. I'm, I'm just putting such a light amount on here that the whole point is I'm not going to change the card mats. They're all, it's all going to dry in here together. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to hit this one time real quick. See how that's just a little light amount. Just one little touch of card spray and put this there. And then I'm going to put another plate on top, and we're going to hold it. And 
I don't know if it's going to work, but you know, when it works, when it comes to like the Pokemon uh, cards that I've been sharing with you guys lately, I just put a little bit of moisture on there like that and just hold these things and just like, let it, let it rest out. And I've made some mega crazy improvements. Um, yeah, you know, card conservatory is, you know, I, um, you're right. I, I think, I think that will do it. So like clearly just touching a little bit of it with the, um, with, uh, what am I trying to say with the, um, with the detail Q-tip, just touching that and just letting it rest for that half hour or whatever we've been doing, which just wasn't enough. So remember if you got a Valley, like I had there, that was like a little Valley in the, uh, card. You don't want to smash it down. Now, you might be like, well, it's between pads right now. What are you talking about? Well, if you're going to put some moisture on it, you can hold it there. But if you're just trying to work on like a little dent or a little divot um, that's small in front of you, just put a little moisture on it and just like let it sit and look at it, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's – and that, you guys, I'm just I'm looking over here. Sorry, I'm just making trying to sure I got everybody's questions. I think we did it. Oh, you guys rock, man. Thanks for hanging out with me for the hour. I hope that uh, this was a good uh, a good hangout for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. And sincerely, you guys, you mean more to me than I could ever let you know. And I uh, just appreciate all the the, the community. And just uh, I look forward to reading your messages and emails and seeing all your good results every day. So I appreciate you so much. So take care of yourself. Take care of your cards. And take better care of somebody else. I'm Kurt with Kurt's Card Care.